Today I'm going to show you a couple of modifications I made to this Para-NSFED trail-friendly antenna, and then I'm going to take it out and do some testing out in the field. So the first thing we're going to do is make more room between the BNC connector and the box that holds the match unit. It was just way too tight for me, so that's an easy fix with a box cutter. Now I'm using some paracord, some plastic ends from those little line winders you find at the store used for electrical cores. I just chopped off a piece of that, and it's the right size to fit into the top of my mast. Do a quick hole drill to where I want it, and then we're going to add some paracord to the inside. That way it's a lightweight, easy to see modification. The idea behind this is to make it so that the matchbox stays secure to my mast. With the little loops for the paracord, that doesn't have to be just for this. You can hook on some string, some rope or whatever, and just use that to secure to a tree or bush. So it's not meant for just this mast setup like I have now. This is kind of a standard setup for me when I'm out portable operating. Simple to make, doesn't take a lot of hard extra work or special tools to put this together. Take a lighter or something and burn the ends of your paracord rope so they won't fray. All right, I finished making these modifications to the little mount. I'm hoping that it's gonna make it a little bit easier to install. It's all about getting it simply put up. I wanna see if there are any effects to using this thing out in the field, so let's go try it out. So now that my modifications are done, I'm here at the park and I'm gonna set up my first experiment. And that's gonna be with my short mast and my longer mast over at the other end. And the reason I wanna do these comparison tests is I wanna try a couple configurations to keep it simple for setup. One of the prime reasons for setting up this test is if I had any complaints at all about this NFED and trail friendly antenna would be that the match unit at the end is pretty heavy and I use really lightweight fishing masts. But when it's windy out there, like say on a mountaintop or even on a, a windy day at a park, that thing blows around like crazy. Now these masts are capable of handling some weight and some abuse. I never want to push it to the limit. So in this test, I'm using the antenna the way it was designed with the insulator, the small little tube at the end up on top of my mast. Because this is the way the antenna is supposed to be installed and configured and tuned, this will be my reference point from here on out. For this test, I'm using my Rig Expert AA230. The coax I'm using for this test today is my 20 foot length from my buddy pole system. It's the, they call it the Milspec C17. And the cable's labeled as a RG58C/U. All right, with the antenna set up and my analyzer hooked up to it, we're gonna run the test for 10, 20, and 40 meters. With the antenna up the way it's supposed to be, it's probably 20 feet to the far end is up 20 feet in the air. And this low end here is maybe three and a half feet. So from where I tuned this up the first time I set up the antenna after I initially bought it, I did my initial tune. And so this is where the frequency resides. All right, how about 20 meters? So at 14, 3, 41, I'm at just under, so 1.85 to 1. And at 14 megahertz even, I'm just at 2.0. So it's pretty flat across the band at 2 to 1. So if I stick with 2.0 as my benchmark for the band, uh, 7.133 is 2.0. And if I go to the high end, the 7.3, I'm also at 2.0. And the lowest swing, the lowest dip is 7.213 at 1.66 to 1. And I say that's perfectly acceptable for being able to operate. I can use the tuner in my KX2, or even if I had the 857, I could use that without a tuner. So what I wanna do here is eliminate this as being the endpoint and put the trap here. So in order to accomplish this, I've gotta slide the mast about four feet up closer to the other end. And one of the tools that's gonna to help me do this is my paracord, my pink favorite micro cord from atwoodrope.com put a link in the description below. It's really useful, I can see it, it's strong. I wanna say on their website it's rated at uh, 100 pounds. That could be wrong, even if it's rated at 50 pounds, this thing's got maybe 10 pounds worth of pressure being pulled on it. So I've got a number of different options that I can choose to pick from. I can take this and drill here onto one or more of the ends and make a, a relief point. I can also use the hollow tube that the trap is inside of Using that though, I could risk putting too much strain on that and break it off. Or I could just use some of my string and wrap it around the wire winder. It's already here, it's strong enough, and maybe that's the thing to do first. All right, so the mast is moved about four feet in, 
And as you raise it up, it's gonna put tension on that thing and keep the antenna wire tight. Now the downside to this setup is the end of the antenna is dangling. I think that's probably four and a half feet, something like that. But now we're gonna test it on the analyzer and see if it makes much of a difference. On 10 meters, it didn't seem to make much of a difference at all, but for 20 meters, I could see the SWR for the entire band lowered just a little bit, not super significant. But on 40 meters, it did move my lowest SWR tuning point a little higher in the band, so making the antenna seem a little bit shorter. All right, my last test is going to be extending that loose dangling piece. I wanna extend that out farther into the field. So it's gonna be like an inverted V. I'm gonna take the insulator that has a hole in it. I'm gonna run some string through that and pull that out like the inverted V that I talked about. So before we move on, I wanna share this last tip with you. When you take your center insulator and you're first tuning the antenna, you're supposed to wind the wire around here and trim it to the point to where it's tuned on the lowest part of the band on 40 meters. What are you gonna do with the leftover wire that you have? For me, I left the excess wire on and wrapped it around itself. And with the far end, now I used marine grade heat shrink tube. You don't need to. Matter of fact, it's probably better not to do that because then you can cut it off later when you need to readjust your antenna if you wanna change it to a different part of the band. What I love about this paracord is it's so thin. It fits in almost any of my antenna applications. If you use normal paracord, sure it's stronger, but you can't fit it into these things. And I'm never gonna be setting up an antenna where I need a 100 pound test to hold the thing up. It's just not gonna happen. So now it's time to get this antenna up in the air, and then we're gonna take the loose end and we're gonna shove it out there. Because it's this far away, if I had a tree, I would hook it to that, but I don't, so I'm gonna put a stake in the ground and that'll get me the tension I want to keep that thing vertical, right? I'm just gonna use the same string. I'm not gonna cut it. I'm just gonna wrap some loops around it to keep it tight. All right, now that that's set up, let's do another test. 10 meters wasn't much of a change and either was 20 meters. All about the same, a little bit lower, but nothing significant. Now 40 meters on the other hand, that was a huge change. The tuning frequency went down to the bottom of the band, and since it's narrow, it's way more obvious. So those are the three tests that I was able to do with the antenna in its full extended position with the trap being in the, you know, not at the top of the mast, with the trap at the top of the mast and the end of the antenna dangling down. And then lastly, the third setup was with the dangling part of the antenna being pulled away. So kind of like an inverted V. So these results were pretty interesting to me. I'm glad I did the test. Test number one showed the initial place where I had it tuned, where it was higher in the band because it's a narrow banded antenna. Test number two, I moved it so that the trap was at the mast and the rest of the antenna was dangling down. That only slightly moved my tuning point a little higher in the band. But when I took test number three and had the wire farther out like an inverted V, that lowered my tuning point way to the bottom of 40 meters. So that's significant enough to know that I don't wanna be doing that when I'm out operating portable. So now I know I have options for setting this antenna up, whether I'm confined and I don't have as much space or I can hook it up to a tree if there's one nearby. And that's why I enjoy getting out and doing these kind of experiments because then you know when it comes time to use it, what's gonna work for you. So enough of this, I've spent enough time setting up the antenna. Let's see if we can get on the air and see if we can make any contacts. Is this frequency in use, K7 Sierra Whiskey? All right, 10 meters seems to be dead today. I'm not surprised. So the last band I wanna try is 40 meters. Is this frequency in use, K7 Sierra Whiskey, K7 SW? K7 Sierra Whiskey. A kilowatt seven Sierra whiskey QRP. Okay, the QRP station again. A kilowatt seven Sierra whiskey. That is kilo seven sugar whiskey. Over, over. Kilo seven sugar whiskey. You're about a four by one in the back of Georgia. Hey, thank you for the four by one. You are five three five three here into Utah. Over. Seven three, have a good activation. All right, well, that was a really quick test, 10 meters, 20, and 40 meters. Um, most of the bands are pretty crummy, but 20 meters was there, and I made a call to Wisconsin on 10 watts with my antenna barely off the ground. 
All right, so getting on the air was worth it. We actually got to make Parks on the Air contact. Thank you for that operator back in Wisconsin. Uh, I say that's a win. It's always fun to get out there and help another activator get a park done. Well, I hope this video convinced you or will convince you that getting out there and just setting up your antenna in all kinds of different configurations will make it work. So I hope you enjoy this sort of thing. Make sure you click that like button down below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.